So, uh, real quick, I'm Robert Macrocky, Macrox on Twitter, GitHub, IRC, all that stuff. Uh, I work as a security engineer and a systems engineer for DreamHost. Uh, that's mostly my background is information security and systems. So, a lot of my talks that have been here are uh, more program oriented. Um, and because my background is not quite program oriented, you're not going to be talking about ASDs or parsers or things like that. My interest is really the practical application of uh, web environments, scalability. Um, and in the last couple of years, Lua. So we're going to look at uh, how we can use Lua uh, to extend mod security, uh, as well as Lua's use in porting um, or extending uh, mod security functionality into other environments. Uh, so we are uh, going to let's get slide. Uh, we're going to go over uh, WAP technologies real briefly, and then look at a couple of uh, free open source implementations, mod security specifically, uh, look at its DSLs, how we can extend it with Lua, um, and then some of the projects that are available for uh, OpenRC. Uh, so, what is a web, uh, web app? It's a web application firewall. Uh, the idea with WAPs are uh, looking at uh, layer 7 HTTP or HTTPS traffic uh, and essentially doing DPI. Uh, so, looking at behavior of a transaction, blocking something that looks like SQL injection, crossing scripting, uh, looking at uh, anomalous behavior that might look like a, a brute force attack or some sort of brute force block and things like that. Uh, basically, we want to be able to deeply look into the client and see what the server sees from the client and then be able to, to act on that. Uh, so we see required features, this is not required, this is just my opinion of what makes a well-featured WAP, but you talk to 10 different security engineers, you get 10 different opinions. Uh, so obviously being able to access and manipulate both the request and the response headers in the body, everything about the transaction coming in over the wire, uh, having a flexible and extensible configuration, uh, and having a tunable configuration as well. Uh, a lot of WAP environments, uh, depending on what rule set you have or what your behaviors initially look like, uh, you end up with a lot of false positives. So being able to tune out for that is really important. Uh, having an anti-evasion mechanism is really important uh, for attackers that aren't just skins or, or bots, they're all random, most you know, common zero day exploits. Uh, people that try to uh, evade firewall techniques by different coding schemes or things like that, being able to pull apart uh, parts of the transaction to be able to uh, defeat those evasion techniques are really important. Uh, having persistent data storage when you want to look at uh, inter-request behavior, so not just looking at one single request at a time, but looking what has the, the client done over the last 60 seconds? What have they done over the last day? What have they done on this other cluster of servers in addition to just what this particular instance has seen? Um, having a Turing complete language is useful. Um, on security's DSL is sort of kind of Turing complete, which is really scary when you think about it. Um, uh, and having uh, detailed and performant audit logging is really important. So understanding what your web is doing, you know, that doesn't mean debug logging. Uh, as an engineer, in charge of the cluster, I don't necessarily care about what the entire WAP is doing the whole time, but when it blocks a transaction or when it impacts a client, I need to understand what happened in detail so that I can go back and say, this is why the transaction was blocked, this is why we manipulated part of your headers, etc., etc. Uh, so we are going to look at Mod Security first, which was originally written as an Apache module. Uh, it does have kind of a unique DSL. Uh, it does have the capability to look at request and response headers. It's extendable uh, both through uh, Lua and by writing your own custom C modules with some uh, additional tooling that uh, Trustway, the developers, have provided. Don't recommend doing that unless you have a lot to do with it. Uh, so this is Mod Security's DSL. Uh, this is what a single rule uh, might look like if you're running mod security. Uh, I have no idea what any of this means. Uh, that's actually, I know what it means, but only because I looked this morning. Um, that is one of the ugliest regexes that I've ever seen. Uh, if anybody can tell me what that's actually doing, I will buy you a beer after this. One of my favorite quotes uh, that I heard recently about mod security's DSL, uh, I think I heard this to do, was, was mod security's DSL makes my baby cry. Uh, I heard that at Nginx Comp, and I went home and I showed a rule set uh, to my nine-month-old daughter. She didn't actually cry. <laughs> funny, but now she just kind of stared and then peed on the keyboard a little bit. Uh, one of the um, uh, uh, maintainers for the OWASP PRS, the, the core rule set that Trustway helps maintain, said, no, just give it two or three years and the stock comes in and will kick in. And eventually, you know, you stop hating yourself so much. Uh, so there are four parts to a ModSec rule definition. Uh, first part is the directive. Uh, Generally, this is sec rule or sec action, something like that, that defines how uh, Apache is going to interact with the request. Uh, because these were originally written as Apache uh, configuration directives, this is something that you can stick directly inside of your Apache config. Uh, and porting that to uh, other platforms like Nginx, uh, like any other web servers, makes that kind of problematic because you have uh, a web that was written for, for one particular environment, 
but as its use has evolved over the years, people are wanting to support it for Nginx, for Lighty, other environments, and the configuration doesn't always work out. Uh, the second part of the rule set is the collection. So what are we looking for? Uh, the headers, something in the query string, the client ID, uh, metadata about file uploads. They say metadata, not the actual upload content. That's important, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, there's capabilities to look at either a single element, um, an entire array of uh, so the whole query string, or different parts of a post upload, um, or individual parts of uh, 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 post body or things like that. Uh, next is the operator, so what do we want to do uh, based on the collection that we have? So we can uh, check against the regex, we can look for a string of quality, do uh, pattern matching, numeric comparison. Uh, sorry, IBM, no way to support this yet. They're, I'm sure they're working on it soon, yeah. um, And then uh, the final part is what do we want to do? So deny the request, uh, or allow it, or send a three and one, or tell the client to go somewhere else. Um, there's metadata rules that we can say this is what uh, how mature this rule set is, this is how severe this rule set is if it matched. Um, and then non disruptive rules to build large and complex chains, set persistent storage variables, things like that. Uh, so, this is an example rule. So we had a get for index.php with the query uh, params to equals bar. Uh, a rule that would match that would be uh, set rule is the directive. The collection is the args get collection, which is uh, all the get request params. Uh, looking for the individual param called foo, uh, if that matches uh, with string quality something called bar, uh, then we assign uh, our rule ID, which is just a uh, uh, numeric ID, uh, run it in a specific phase, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, and then deny the transaction. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, Mod security, uh, as I mentioned, does have the ability to store uh, additional variable information uh, in a couple different forms. Uh, so there's per transaction information where you can say, uh, I'm going to set a variable with an arbitrary uh, key value pattern. Uh, that's uh, with a lifetime of this transaction only. Uh, you can also set persistent data, so you can say uh, a variable associated with this IP address or the session cookie or this whatever arbitrary definition you want, uh, and that stays alive for the duration of that session uh, or potentially uh, infinitely if it's in the case of, say, a client address. This would be usage of uh, a transactional variable. So we have one rule that if it matches, we set a variable called tx.matched uh, with a value 12345. Uh, later on in a rule set or in a separate rule set, uh, we can uh, look for a variable in TX called matched, and if it does have a particular value, then we can do something else with it. So this lets administrators build uh, complex chains and groups of chains of rule sets uh, on pretty arbitrary logic. Uh, same kind of concept with uh, persistent storage. Uh, so Mod Security has uh, an action called init call where you say define. Uh, all the variables associated with an IP based on this value. In this case, it's the remote address of the IP. Um, you can use next order four headers, any sort of logic that you can pull out uh, from Mod Security's DSL you can use to assign uh, to a particular IP for uh, that uh, user's storage. Um, and then a couple of example rule sets. Uh, if the client hits something called login.php, uh, then we say uh, we'll bump a variable called login.attempt. Uh, that uh, variable is greater than five, then we would deny that. It's a really brief example. Don't actually do that. All right. So how do we extend this with Lua? Uh, Mod security has a couple ways to, to do this. The, the first is through an operator called an inspect file. Uh, the idea of this is that it will execute uh, any script that you have on your file system uh, based on the collection element that you provide. Uh, for Lua, if, if that script ends in .lua, that gets executed internally instead of forking a process and, and actually executing that. Uh, one of the, the collections that Mod Security makes available is something called Files Temp Names, which is a list of the, the names of the, the on disk files of all of the uh, upload parts. So, say somebody is uh, uploading pictures uh, or using any sort of, uh, any sort of multi part encoded upload, uh, that becomes available through this collection, and then we can write a script uh, that receives those file names and then can execute on that. And this would be a brief example of that. So, the, the Lua functionality wants a function called main. Uh, you provide a, a single argument called file name that is that name on disk. Uh, this is a, a brief example I think that comes straight from the docs. Uh, open up the file, read the first K of it, and then if it matches the string, um, we assign a variable, uh, and we just return that variable with the input function. Uh, Mod security says if this is uh, returned as nil, then the rule didn't match. If it's not nil, any value at all, uh, then the rule didn't match, and then uh, take all your actions based on that. Uh, the second way of extending mod security through Lua is through a non-disruptive uh, action called exec. Uh, so this says when your rule matched, then run this script. 
this is a little bit less flexible. Um, it does have the single load detection, so if, if it sees that the, past the, the script ends in dot Lua, it will execute it through the, uh, the internal Lua, otherwise it just forks the process. Um, uh, and this just detects that uh, anything happens to, to be written to standard out. If it doesn't see anything written to standard out, uh, it says, oh, this execution failed, uh, logs an error, but doesn't actually do anything because this is just a non-disruptive action. Uh, so this isn't particularly flexible, uh, in my opinion. I haven't seen it really used a lot in the wild. Uh, the third way to, to extend this is through something called the second rule script. So we had second rule where you define a collection and an operator. That's how I want security would run the rule. Uh, the alternative is to use set rule script, which says uh, just run this Lua script, and then if it matches, you can take the set of actions. There's a, a small API that that type of script would provide. There, there's a, a, a log function that you can use to surprisingly log things. Uh, get get bars, uh, get bar, get bars, and set bar, which lets you interact with collections, uh, persistent storage, and collections available from the request. And we'll see an example of that shortly. Oh, we'll see an example of that right now. So this is what MLog looks like. So MLog9 is uh, just log level and then your message. Uh, uh, MGet bar uh, would be <coughs> a variable that's, that mod security is made available to us, store it locally, do a thing with it, um, and then in here with this logic, uh, we have the ability to set arbitrary values. So in this example, just if return is a thing, then we set a variable, but you can write complex scripts to set variables in some cases, but not in other cases. You can set variables unconditionally. This gives you a lot more flexibility as far as managing variable uh, and persistent storage outside of just defining generic mod security rule chains. Uh, so just some implementation facts, I guess. Uh, this is all done in a single file in Apache source code, so 520 lines of code. Uh, it was first done in 2007 over 10 commits or so, uh, and most of that still remains unchanged to the day. Uh, the way this works is it just initiates a new Lua state, pops in a couple of global variables, uh, there's a couple of user data pointers, um, and the, the M global that we saw uh, that provides uh, all of those functions. There's only been 34 commits to this. Um, there hasn't been any work on it in a couple of years. I think the most recent work was just to uh, add the Lua 5.3 support, but other than that, uh, it's, it's pretty much been untouched for about five years. Uh, so as I mentioned, um, uh, working with mod security variables, uh, when you're not doing it with the Lua API, your rule has to match in order to set or get the variable, which means you have to build complex chains. Uh, if you want to do a lot of arbitrary work on setting variables uh, with Lua, when you're just executing a Lua script, you can do that at whim in Lua syntax, which means you've got a more flexible language to actually do something rather than writing with this arbitrary DSL to try to get set variables, which is more flexible in my opinion. Uh, we can't see that at all. This was just a screenshot of uh, what the source code looks like to get and set variables. This is 15 lines of code. I think the next one is 30, which we're going to skip over. This was just to show that the implementation of getting and set variables is actually really, really simple. Uh, there's not a lot of overhead, which makes it great. So, as I was doing some research for this talk, uh, I was thinking, what, how could we use this degree most? Um, we wanted to, to figure out a way to kind of beef up our mod security infrastructure. We have about 35,000 machines uh, running a patching to mod security. Uh, we have a, a web environment that focuses on a lot of zero-day patching um, and a lot of brute force prevention. Uh, but we don't do any sort of heuristics. We don't really look at uh, file uploads or anything like that. Uh, so we thought, uh, well, let's, let's find a way to, to use this technology. Let's find a way to, to sort of uh, uh, be able to extend our functionality, not just look at request headers and things like that. Uh, so we, we laid out a couple of requirements. We needed to be actually actually do something that extended our functionality, not just that I want to use Lua for the sake of using Lua. We need to actually make this feature full. Uh, it needs to be performant because we're a shared web host. People are expecting our service to respond reasonably all the time. Uh, and we need to be able to fail open if something goes wrong. Uh, we don't want to impede customer uh, traffic or behavior just because we made a mistake in coding or had a bad expression or something like that. So we have existing uh, utilities uh, that look for uh, backdoor shells, um, uh, backline scripts, and malware on super sites that are basically just e grab on steroids. Uh, and we thought we have a, a lot of these uh, POSIX regular expressions. Again, sorry, no worries, we'll get there. Uh, we have a lot of these POSIX expressions uh, that we can't natively use with Lua because Lua doesn't have POSIX uh, or regular expression support. Uh, but I found a library called Alrexlib that does have bindings for new POSIX, PCRE, TRE, and one other regular expression that I haven't heard of. Uh, 
Um, so now we, we have the ability to use the script to, to load in chunks of data off disk or RAM disk in our case, uh, and be able to search that through with our existing signatures. So now we have a platform where uh, we can scan a customer's site uh, for known patterns for malware, backdoor shells, and things like that. After the fact, we can also take a proactive stance in, uh, you know, b before somebody uploads a shell on your site, let's catch that, let's log that information, share that with you, and then be able to act on that client IP across our whole cluster. This is just an example of what of, uh, what of our signatures might look like. There's some metadata associated uh, with it, uh, and uh, a regular question. It's just a really dumbed down example. Um, these are all just JSON blobs that we can send in and out of various systems. Yay, structured data. Uh, talk about being able to fail forward. If we have a case where uh, I was up at two in the morning and wrote a bad regular expression, uh, or somebody managed to, to upload a file that just caused an insane amount of backtracking, we need to find a way to be able to short circuit anything that we're doing so that we're not blocking the worker process, we're not preventing the customer's uh, request from going through in the case that uh, this turned out to be false positive. Uh, so I found another simple Lua uh, binding for the system's uh, alarm functionality. So we can just set an alarm uh, and throw an error and then call our function that actually does the searching and looks through all of our signatures. And if after a second or any arbitrary amount of time we say this is taking too long, we can basically short circuit, uh, log the error that way our team knows that something went wrong, but now we're not in a state where the customer's request is just hanging, and every other request is just hanging. Uh, and our, of course, our third goal was uh, performance. So we wanted to say under a quarter of a second of additional latency, uh, we've got about 100 or so uh, uh, regular expressions, about 125 just flat strings that we're looking for. Um, and those we just search uh, in our, our uploading checker just through strength.match, we don't need an actual call to tell or anything like that. Um, the, the goal of this was, was under 250 milliseconds per file initially. Uh, now that the target goal is we're, we're doing more and more concept work is uh, keeping this under 250 milliseconds for all requests. So even if you're uploading 10 files, we still want to be able to keep that induced latency under a quarter of a second. Uh, and so far, so good, we're seeing about 60 milliseconds to run through uh, all of our signatures. Um, uh, false positive and false negative rates are the same thing that we would find with uh, our in-house utilities that, that already do the malware searching. Uh, so the, the idea with this is now we just have an extra harness around some signatures that uh, other members of my team or other teams can work on, uh, and we can just put this into our WAF environment. Uh, so moving forward with Mod Security, uh, I mentioned before Mod Security was originally written as an Apache module. Uh, uh, Trustwave, the, the company that developed it, realized that there's more web servers than just Apache, there's Nginx, IIS, you name it. Um, so they, they started revamping Mod Security to something called LiveMod Security uh, to make it platform agnostic, basically it's just a C++ app that you can hook into in any of your systems and will run uh, all of the same Mod Security functionality but in an arbitrary environment. Unfortunately, uh, there's no Lua support. Uh, I asked one of the developers and he said soon, you know. So we'll shift gears to Nginx. Uh, like I said, uh, the existing mod security ports uh, are unstable. Live mod security is actually available for a commercial uh, offering that Nginx provides. Uh, it's pretty feature incomplete though. There's, just, there's still some stability issues. Um, it does work for things like the Wasp CRS, uh, but it's, it's not uh, really fully feature complete yet. Uh, there's other options like Naxi, uh, which is really lightweight. It's a native Nginx module, uh, but it lacks a lot of the features that I think are really important about, like heuristics, response analysis, persistence storage, things like that. Uh, so a couple of years ago, I was working on uh, my master's thesis, um, starting to build out essentially a, a cloud reverse proxy bath environment. Uh, I came across OpenResty, which everybody knows about, so I'm just going to skip this slide. Uh, most of the, uh, the WAF implementations that I found at the time were essentially a high-level DSL where, where people were uh, writing rules and compiling down uh, to Lua and, and writing that. What's up, Black Black? Uh, the, there were a few other projects that I found. There was one called Pick Defense that was the first like just generic uh, Lua rule engine that would run for OpenRSD. Um, I didn't find anything that actually worked well or had all the features that I wanted, so I started building uh, what at the time was called FreeWAF is now Lua RSD WAF. So the idea with FreeWAF is that it was a free, open, scalable cloud reverse proxy. So basically we set up a, a handful of small VMs uh, on DigitalOcean, Linode, uh, just VM providers, uh, and wrote a, a handful of interfaces for people just to point their DNS at us and then we'll reverse proxy over traffic and write the same uh, concept of mod security rules but in our scalable cloud environment. Uh, and this was free, which is why it didn't last very long because I was tired of pumping my own money into it just for a school project. Uh, 
uh, to the, the code that powered that has turned into a little rusty run uh, that I've been working on uh, two, two and a half years at this point. Uh, we've had a handful of contributors. Uh, it's right now, I think we're about 500 commits. Uh, it's really just a hobby for me at this point. Um, but it got me here. Uh, so the, 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 the big goals with Blue Rest UF are on security compatibility. So we don't want to write a, a new DSL. One of the things that I don't like about something like Taxi is that I have to take all my background with one security and find a way to retranslate these rules. And hopefully the, the, the features that I'm used to are available. And if they're not, then I'm screwed. Uh, so we're not trying to build a new DSL. We're not trying to, to have any new design paradigms. Uh, we're just trying to, to keep functional compatibility as much as we can. Uh, again, there are some differences between Nginx and Apache and how those operate, so there's never going to be a complete one-to-one -one translation. Uh, but the goal is basically to get this as close as possible. Uh, we're trying to keep our, our uh, engine footprint down to a minimum. At this point, most of the testing that I've seen, uh, requests will run at about 300 microseconds. Uh, and on a decent stack box with uh, a decent CPU, uh, we're seeing about 15,000 requests per second. The memory footprint of this is pretty low. I think it's about 5 megabytes of memory uh, additional inside the, the Nginx worker process. Uh, and that's static, there's no additional allocations that need to be made uh, per request because we're just referencing all the data that the Nginx Lua API provides for request headers, response body, uh, queries, or things like that. Uh, so like I mentioned, novelty isn't necessary. I'm not trying to find a, a new way to, to really dive into heuristics or use machine learning. Those things are, are great, uh, but for some people, there's, there's a real need for a stable, uh, scalable WAF solution that's performant, and we need it now not in six months, not in two years, when maybe somebody else will have time to, to provide this. Um, so the goal is to be able to, to have a stable environment where people can say, I'm gonna take my mod security rule set, I'm gonna put it on an open RC cluster, and it just works. Um, so being able to, to respond to feature requests or bug fixes is important for us. Um, generally, I'm on IRC most of the time. Uh, in most cases, uh, bug fixes will generally get done within a day or two. Uh, eventually, we'd like to put some more extensibility into this, um, so making configurable function hooks, so when uh, an event calls, you can uh, put in your own function instead of just running the, the typical 403 deny or however you want to configure that. Um, maybe writing our own DSL, um, doing more integration with OPM, the new Open Rescue Package Manager. Uh, it's on the books, not really a focus right now, though. Uh, real quick, some of the implementation points. Uh, some configuration of edits that was kind of a premature optimization that actually led to some performance loss that I need to go back and fix. Um, we do a lot of memoization of functions, so uh, five minutes. Uh, so when we when we get the data and we say I want to um, look at all the request headers and run some anti-evasion techniques, rather than rerunning that calculation every time, we just memoize that and we can reference that the next time we see uh, that particular lookup for. Uh, whatever header and uh, anti-transformation or anti-evasion technique uh, that the that rule specifies. Uh, we do make a pretty sensitive use of lookup tables. So one example for uh, actually doing a lookup is just with a lookup table called lookup in the operators module that takes a self-reference, uh, a collection and a pattern, and a transactional context table, and then defines uh, a boolean of whether or not matched, and if it matched, what that value was. So this lets us write uh, new operators really quickly without having to write a lot of boilerplate code. We just write a new function in the lookup table and it's uh, So being that uh, mod security compatibility is really important to us, we need to have some translation tooling. So uh, there's some, a couple of rule scripts that are basically hacked together over a couple of weeks uh, that will read in uh, standard input and write out to standard output. It takes mod security DSL and writes a JSON blob that lower us to read. Uh, this means that at some point we could maybe write our own DSL that would also get translated to JSON, but again, that's way down the line. Usage of this is really simple. Run the script, standard in is your modsec config, standard out is your JSON file. And then from there, uh, it's a single config directive to add another rule set in the lower SDF. Uh, with persistent storage, we talked about variables uh, uh, living long term in between requests. Mod security uses uh, an old uh, database utility uh, called SDBM. Uh, which is pretty slow, uh, it has to do a double disk read, so it reads once when the collection is loaded and then reads again and then writes every time you save a value, uh, which can be buggy and subject to race conditions when you're using event or threaded FDMs. Uh, with Blue Rescue Wrap, we just use the built-in shape dictionary, uh, which is just an arbitrary under the hood. Uh, we also have engines for Memcache and Redis, but because we use that same lookup table architecture, we can build a new engine really quickly, we just have to implement certain functions that actually read the data, serialize it, and get it back. Uh, 
Uh, we are compatible with Rescue Core. Uh, there was a, uh, a bug that we found uh, taking some regex parsing that uh, we made. We found the bug and made a patch for, and got it back into Rescue Core. So go open source. Um, and using Rescue Core, really, you see a performance increase that's pretty significant when you're running this. Uh, request go from 450 microseconds to about 300. Uh, yeah, microseconds to about 300 microseconds. Uh, there's still more optimization to do. Uh, this is a point graph. Uh, a good chunk of the, the time is spent in uh, in process rule, uh, but there's also a good chunk of time that's that's in the new function that we call this really really just ungodly table copy function. A, a copy that was like in the first initial commit of this, uh, and that needs to go away. The idea with this was uh, by inheriting some config directives, it was supposed to save processing time, but it's turned out to be a lot more expensive than I thought. Uh, histogram of uh, runtime based on 10,000 samples. Uh, we do make some pretty extensive use of third-party libraries. Uh, so Loop Injection, which is a C library written by uh, Client 9, uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, I think he, he works for Etsy. Uh, it's a C library that just does static analysis. Instead of using regular expressions, just tokenizes the string and says whether or not this looks or doesn't look like SQL injection. Uh, we also use uh, Lua AO Corsic, uh, which is a Lua and then C uh, implementation of AO Corsic uh, string pattern matching and then a handful of other lower SD modes, uh, IP utils, lower SD code team, things like that. Uh, I talked about most of these limitations. Uh, Nginx doesn't have support for uh, disrupting a transaction uh, after the headers have already been sent. Uh, that's just a limitation of Nginx. It's one of the things that uh, mod security offers that Nginx never will be because they're used to different design paradigms. Uh, we don't have any uh, rules that checking yet, so if you write bad mod security DSL, you're probably not going to be able to run a lower SD one. Uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, we don't have everything translated. Um, again, some of those are architectural limitations. Some of those are just, uh, I don't think they're worth translating. Uh, if you do, it's open source. Uh, I've got a couple of resources, and I'll leave the slide. Uh, so links to uh, the GitHub project, OpenSD site, uh, the Mod Security project. Uh, that's it. Any questions? No? Awesome. My mouth is really dry. Thanks guys.